All right, I'm going to try my best to answer this question here about explaining how a gas acts more ideally at high temperature and low pressure. First of all, have an idea of what a ideal gas is. To me, it's a perfect gas. Um, it can do no wrong. But here's what I mean by that. So I have these four points down here about a, what an ideal gas is. It is that the molecules are far apart and that the molecule itself has zero volume. So what does that mean? If we look at argon, for example, argon, just a single argon atom, has, and these numbers are irrelevant, just giving you an idea of kind of what it means. The radius of one argon atom is 97 picometers. Again, number, not that big of a deal. It's small, let's just let you know that. It's a small atom. The distance between here, this argon to this argon, is 3.5. 3 nanometers apart. And you go, well, what does that mean? Well, if we blow it up and say, now the argon atom is the size of a golf ball, which everybody can see that a golf ball is, well, a golf ball, because hopefully we've seen it before. Now, if we blow up that argon atom to the size of a golf ball, what it means is the space between that 3.3 nanometers, because who in the right mind knows what a nanometer looks like because it's too small, is now well, four feet apart. And that's just two, two atoms of argon. Just imagine if each one. That's why a gas occupies so much volume because it's mostly nothing because the spaces between the molecules are so great. So therefore, we can say that an ideal gas has no volume. The other thing is, they are in constant random motion. So they're moving this way, that way, that way, that way, or that way. Until they hit something or bounce off something, then they'll change their path. But usually we say that those lines are in straight lines, but they're just random motion. Okay. The other thing about them heating, uh, hitting each other or sides of the containers is that they are elastic in their collisions. Again, that's more for physics to be able to explain to you a little bit more in greater detail. What that means is there's no loss of total energy, so they basically hit and keep on going. Okay. Uh, but the big deal for you is the understanding that an ideal gas does not experience any, and that's number four, there are no intermolecular forces that an, a molecule or an atom will experience as a gas. We say that there are no intermolecular forces. Okay? So that's what an ideal gas is. But the problem is they're not ideal. Okay? They are real gases, and real gases have real problems. And it has to go with when we use Pivnert, okay, Pivnert is based upon an ideal gas that does all those four points that you see on this page right here. And the main thing is they don't experience any intermolecular forces. And your equation that you use in Pivnert does not take into account for that. And that's okay. So there's going to be slight deviations between, like when you do a reaction that involves a gas like the airbag lab, you may not get exactly the volume that you calculated because CO2 is not an ideal gas. It's a real gas, so therefore it's going to experience intermolecular forces between those molecules of CO2. So the question is, when does a gas act more like an ideal gas? We want to give it conditions that they hit each other and keep on moving and that they don't have any type of intermolecular forces. So therefore, when does a gas act more like an ideal gas? It's at high temperature. What does that mean? Well, if we have a gas at high temperature... It's moving faster, okay? And if it's moving faster and it hits something, it's not going to experience any kind of slowing down or it's not going to experience any type of intermolecular force attraction between the other molecule. It's just you increase the speed, they're just going to hit each other and bounce off and go about their business and there is no interaction between them. Okay, so that's what you want a high temperature because they're moving faster. A lower pressure, lower pressure does not mean external, okay? Lower pressure means how do I make a, a gas more ideal? Well, I want to 
increase the temperature, but I also want to decrease the pressure. So I got a container here. And what I do is, if I have lower pressure, that means I have fewer atoms or molecules inside the container. Now this is not that case right here. If I had this many atoms or molecules inside the container, well that's going to be a greater pressure. More hits on the container and increased pressure. Therefore there's going to be more intermolecular force interaction between the molecules. How do I want to lessen that? Well, change the temperature. That's one thing. But the other thing is to get rid of pressure. And that means not external, that means internal. So what does that mean? Take away moles, which means lower the pressure. I'm going to have a lower pressure now on my diagram, even though it's totally awesome. I have a lower pressure now. Okay, I can increase the temperature and make them move faster, take, less, take moles out, so therefore there's going to be less interactions between the molecules and the intermolecular forces, and they're going to act more ideally, therefore my Pivnert equation is going to it'll calculate better because that gas is and the conditions that make it act like an ideal condition. So that's my explanation. Hopefully it works out.